we're going to take a look at that. So this is the way you go find a new impact crater on Mars. In a bright area, as seen over there on the left, this is the before picture, and then you look for a change, a dark spot that has been there. And we do this at the lower resolution because we can cover a much more ground at that lower resolution with that context camera. But once we see it, then we can zoom in with our higher resolution camera, and what we see is there on the right. And it is indeed an impact crater. And by looking at the form of these, we're learning more about the present rate of cratering on Mars, and that helps us calibrate this long-term record of cratering on Mars that we use to try to extrapolate relative dates and even absolute dates back into Mars history. It also does one other thing. You notice the dark material. Why is it dark? It's being exposed from underneath. It hasn't been weathered in the same way and covered by dust in the same way that the surrounding terrain has. So this is giving us an insight into what is just beneath this dust layer that covers much of the planet, particularly in this region here, which is one of the volcanic regions, where there seems to be a thick layer of dust for the most part, but nature is kindly excavating some of these materials for us to take a look at to see what is indeed beneath that. Let's go to the next one, please. Well, we've talked about a lot of different things, and part of this is a comparison between the Earth and Mars. We look at a scene on Mars, and our, our, we go, okay, now, where have I seen something like that before? And often it seems very familiar to us, but then we'll notice something's different about it. Sometimes it's the scale. It's not just a canyon. It's a giant rift. It's not just something of this scale. It's something much smaller than what we might expect in terms of the Earth analog. And that's because the surface, even though subject to the same agents, wind, water, the exposure to sunlight, the movement of materials across the planet, has been different in terms of degree and detail on Mars than it is on the Earth. And that gives us a chance to actually compare things in a way that we couldn't do if we only had one of the two examples and not the other. And looking at some of the scenes, we've talked about the gullies up there in the upper left. Going clockwise around, we talked about the polar ice layers and the physical record that they have of more recent geologic change. We talked about the stratigraphy of minerals and telling us that there was a wetter ancient period and that it wasn't just wet, there was a diversity of environments in which the action of water, the environment that water was in, more acidic, more alkaline, was different from place to place. And that tells us there are better and poorer spots to go if we're looking for evidence of life and where things might have been preserved on the planet. Or just learning to read the rocks themselves and bring eventually some of that material back to Earth so that we can use all of our analytic capabilities in understanding not only the geochemistry, but the potential biochemistry of the planet, prebiotic or not. We've seen other parts of the planet. We've seen that it's active today, that there are times and places on Mars where the planet is still changing. This isn't a dead world. It's a changing world. It's different than our own. It gives us a feel for the dry areas of our own planet, perhaps, but Mars is holding, right now, all the water that it can. In its thin, cold atmosphere, clouds form, so that means it saturates. The ground has ice in it. In fact, we've dug into it now, and we've seen that in some locations, it's only a few inches below the surface. We know there are even thicker layers below. We know that there's a mile thick block of ice at the North Polar region, water ice, not just carbon dioxide ice, which comes in the wintertime at that latitude. So all of this is a perspective on the planet. Next slide, please. Now, we take pictures from Earth orbit of Mars, so it seemed only fair that we take a picture of Earth and its moon from Mars orbit. And this is our high-resolution camera taking this image of the Earth. You'll notice those white things and that blue. We are the blue marble, and the oceans certainly make a difference to our planet. But a perspective is what Mars offers us. In many ways, these two planets are fundamentally similar. They're relatively small. Most of the energy that goes to the surface comes from sunlight. They're rapidly rotating. The meteorology of the two planets, in some cases, is very similar. There are winter storms. There are dust storms. And yet, they differ in degree. Now, Mars can't tell us how the climate of the Earth may have changed, but it gives us a perspective to ask the right questions about it. And by having these other examples we have a natural laboratory in the solar system that lets us do these comparisons and to ask questions that we would otherwise miss. 
Mars also has on its surface, part of it is very ancient, and it has preserved materials that are now gone from the Earth's surface that have been recycled through plate tectonics. So going back to the Mars surface today, we may find materials and such that were in place there at a time when the Earth, on Earth, life was just beginning to get a foothold. Whether that ever happened on Mars or not, of course, is still the outstanding question. I'm going to end with that. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to show you some, uh, the next slide here will show you the candidate, the current uh, candidate landing sites for the Mars Science Laboratory to be launched in 2011. And we look at them in different ways. We look at them both in composition, which is the upper left there. We also look at them in terms of the shape of the surface. We're looking for features like deltas, things that look like the Mississippi River Delta in the canyon, are places where channels have flown in, and so we think water is ponded there and such. Those are the aspects. But we've also looked at the surface, and we knew that compositionally, water has been there because the minerals that it left behind are there. And what we'll do is we'll fly into each of these sites as we transition to our question and answer period. Uh, before we do that, I'd like to introduce a couple people in the audience. Jim Erickson, our uh, project manager for the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Mike Kelly, our program scientist. Ramon De Paula, our program executive. And Dwayne, I'll turn it over to you to transition to the question and answer period.